What's up gang, Jose here at Wire Ninjas, the Tri-State's finest audio, video, and home theater install team. Today we're in Upper Saddle River, New Jersey, and it's install day. We're gonna go and hit a rack, we're gonna do some audio, some video, maybe a little bit of data. Um, it's gonna be pretty cool. We have, I have a nice little plan here for this home, and um, I'm very happy to, to see it come to fruition. You know, the homeowners right now, the, the state of the equipment in the home, semi-functional. They're not getting all the functionality that they should out of the current equipment, the current setup, and you'll see why once we get in there. But after the wiring and just give it that magic touch, <laughs> everyone's gonna be much happier. So let's go take a look. All right, buddies. So now we're inside the home and we're downstairs in the basement. And the basement entails the theater, got a billiard room, little popcorn stand behind me, a little snack station and uh, also the racks down here. So let's take a look. I think Steve's hard at work. He's starting to do what needs to be done at the rack location. So this is the rack. And if you've seen our installs before, this is not what our racks look like. Look at this, buddies. There is so many things wrong here. Um, a lot of the equipment's not functional. So upon the initial visit and assessment, we did a, a simple discovery of the circuits so that we could see what we're dealing with as far as what equipment needs to go in and the time it's gonna take and what work needs to be put in. You know, we come up with a solution that works for the homeowner depending on their particular needs. We find out what they want and we get the right stuff and we come in and we make it happen. But I mean, we pulled a bunch of equipment that was not defunct, not even functional. And I think none of the cable boxes worked, Steve, or one of the TVs worked. Um, so we got all the TVs working as a temporary solution because the homeowner just moved in to make him happy. Same thing with the audio. We got the audio working, but this amp keeps losing channels. This thing is not reliable. It's on its way out. Um, so as of right now, we've been contracted to do a few things. Well, you can see Steve's already rewiring the place. So we've been contracted to rectify and restore the whole home audio system. We also have been contracted to calibrate the theater, provide a form of control. We're gonna do that with Harmony Remote Control. And we also have to get the lights working in there again because somebody decided to put a Crestron switch in here. Hello, sure. Mr. Ken. And we cannot, you're cool. <laughs> we cannot operate the lights without the iPad, so it's kind of a mess. So we're gonna replace the light, uh, light switch with some Lutron Cassetta lighting. We're also going to install the app, the Lutron app on his iPad, smartphone as well. And we'll restore the lights in here. It'll be much easier to have the switch on the wall as well as a Pico remote to control and get control off any smartphone in the home. But also, we're gonna pair that up with some Alexa Eco Dots so we can have voice control lighting system. It's gonna be really cool. So, we have audio. I guess a little bit of video too because we will calibrate the projector, make sure everything's right in the theater after we install the, the remote control, the Harmony. But as far as audio is concerned, this is the amp. I looked it up. It doesn't, I can't find this manufacturer. They don't exist anymore. I've never seen it before. Um, I gotta be honest, there is too many audio and video manufacturers in existence. Um, but it seems to be that this is not a very robust piece of equipment. And the reason I say that is because simply powering it off and on will restore some of the channels, but then they cut out over time. Very odd way this thing is operating. As you can see, the channels back there, see some of them are flashing? Because that means they're off. So we're down to, we've lost two channels on this amp and we're gonna rectify that with some pro-grade equipment. Now, as far as coverage goes for the audio, we have kitchen, two speakers, dining, two speakers, living room, two speakers, the patio, two speakers, master dressing room, two speakers, master bath, two speakers, master bedroom, first floor, two speakers, Powder room, two speakers. Library or, and or office, two speakers. Now, the den has two speakers that terminate at the wall plate inside that particular room. Second floor speaker zones. Bedroom, two speakers. Another bedroom, two speakers. Second floor master, two speakers. Second floor master bathroom, two speakers. So we have a lot of audio in this place that we need to rectify. 
Because right now, I'd say about half of it's working. We got it working with this old amp. Um, also, power. We're going to redistribute power because this is a mess. He's got watt boxes, which aren't bad. Nice little units, but I don't like how the power is... Well, first of all, everything's messy. There's no type of wire management going on. This is a disaster in many ways. Zip ties, zip ties, zip ties. No J-hooks. Nothing holding these wires up. They're literally being held up by a copper pipe. Not cool. Uh, as you can see here, we have a whole other mess to deal with. <laughs> whole lot of extra cabling went down in this house. It was a premium job. The install, the original builder, when he wired the stuff. Did he even wire Cat 6, though? This all looks like Cat 5, to be honest. SMH, people. So, audio, video, power will be redistributed. I think the first step in this, which what is Steve is actually up to, is redistributing these lines. So he's going to thread these all the way back to the point of origin, re-thread them down, you know, strain them out real nice, and then we're going to redistribute them amongst the rack, pick a side, and we'll choose this side for data. Power can go on the other side. We'll keep it, you know, away from each other. But that's the first step in this is the redistribution of these circuits. Now, after that, I think we should get the circuit... Uh, We'll get out our fluke, we'll validate the lines with audio tones, we'll show you guys how to do that. And once the circuits are validated and labeled, we can go ahead and install the new amps. Once the amps go in, we install our source devices. We're actually gonna use two Sonos Connects that he already has. See, mom and dad. <laughs> We're gonna use those two connects and distribute the audio amongst the amps as we see fit, or as they requested. But it seems like a lot of this is gonna get removed. It's not even of any use. Like, Crestron, is this a processor? I believe it's a processor, no? No, it's not a processor. Some type of CP4R, that's pretty old. There should have been a processor in here, but that's not it. There we go, there's a processor, the CP2E. All right guys, so we're getting into this install here, and as you can see, Steve's done a good job of taking the initial steps and uh, Pulling the equipment out, isolating or separating circuits, necessary circuits. So uh, the couple next steps is one, well, initial discovery. Then you assess the equipment, see what you need, and then you give the client or homeowner a time frame in which it can be done. Now, these next steps are determining which circuits are of use to you and which circuits aren't of use to you. The same goes for the equipment. So we determined that all this audio we're gonna to need to redistribute into the rack. And now we're starting to see that some of these lines we don't need and some of the equipment we don't need. As you can see, we put a bunch of it aside here. Um, all the Crestron IR stuff can go. We're no longer using Crestron in this home. It either all works together or not at all. It doesn't make sense. Um, a lot of things wrong here, buddies. Like, this is a butcher job, honestly. Look at the length of this cat. Can go about halfway down the rack. I'm pretty sure someone did a decent job at some point pre-wiring this home, but whoever came here after the fact, I mean, turned it into just a disaster, man. Look at this. And again, I see this way too often in the field. We're called in to clean up messes like this. It's not cool. And to be honest, I don't know whoever came in here, I don't know how they had access to Crestron because I'm pretty sure this is not what Crestron wants to be known for. Is this rack in this condition. But again, we're here to determine what circuits we need, what circuits we don't need. Whatever circuits we don't need, we're going to go ahead and put aside. Uh, it's kind of, I call it rack logistics. And then same thing, equipment we don't need, we're going to put aside. Once we decide all that, all the circuits are partitioned, they're separated, we can start branching out, straining out the individual uh, circuits that we need. So like we'll do audio one path, you know, one strain. We'll do data another path, coax another path, video distribution another path, ETC. And then finally we can wire in our power. But I think the next step is pulling all the equipment, getting it out of the way, deciding what circuits we need, separating or branching off these circuits, then we can start to reinstall the equipment um, depending on, in this case, circuit length. Normally I have a lot of length for my wires, so I could, I could wire in the equipment wherever I want, and I could pull the rack out a good 10 feet, 
This thing is highly serviceable, usable, functional. Um, but here, for example, the HDMI is not very long. So the receiver for the theater, the AVR, is gonna have to go up there. So I think with this particular rack, we're gonna start at the top. But until we pull all the equipment we don't need out of this rack, pull all the circuits we don't need out of this rack, we can start to put it together. So that's the next step is finishing pulling everything and then deciding how where the equipment's gonna go and then redistributing our circuits into said equipment. And then finally the interconnects between equipment. All right guys, so we're getting deep into this rack install. And like I said, I, I wanna show you guys uh, what it's gonna take to validate audio cables and speakers. So circuit validation is important because you have to determine if the circuit has integrity and between the circuit and the output device, the speaker in question, you have to know that these things work before you wire them into equipment. When the circuit and end device are validated, you know that when you wire it into a receiver or a multi-zoned amp, that it's gonna work. And if it doesn't work, it has nothing to do with the circuit or the speaker. So proper way of doing things is to validate each of the lines before you install them into the equipment. So let's go ahead and put a toner on another line, Steve. So we're gonna take our toning equipment. What this does is it sends an audio signal out to the speaker. And this toner is very special, the Fluke uh, Intelltone 200. It can do analog and digital tones. If you have one of these toners, let's see that toner, Steve. If you have one of these toners, as you can see, see I marked it out. It's helpful to my staff uh, which to use and when. Uh, Two-wire analog function is good for speakers because it's an audio signal that the speaker can reproduce. So let's send a tone out. Okay, so we're sending a tone out. Now, let's go find which speaker that is. The whole idea is that we send a tone out, we find which speaker. We still haven't taken control of lighting, so it's still dark in here, unfortunately. That's part of why we're here. Um, so now, I know that that wire is my left front speaker. Now Steve can go ahead, what he's doing is making a label for that. Now we can label that and then install it into the equipment. That is in summation what line verification is. It allows us to validate the circuit, its integrity, as well as the speaker or the end device, and then we can go ahead and label and then install into the equipment. The final piece of that would be data logging. I like to log all my circuits onto a piece of, you know, a data sheet, a master sheet so that we can reference one sheet and look at every circuit, where it starts, the origin, the destination, what it's labeled, what port it goes in, at which device, really nice stuff. It's nice to have this point of reference. So as you can see now, he's clear to make his label and he can label that wire and plug it into the amp. It seems to be that we're starting with the theater. We have all our wires cleaned and strained back from the point of origin and we're gonna shoot into the receiver. Once the receiver's installed, we'll start working on source devices. We'll put the shelvings in, we'll drop this, we'll put a shelf above, below, get our source devices in, get all the interconnects made, and then we can wire power and light that system up. And then I think it'd be wise, Steve, to just do the harmony in one shot, and then we'll be done with the theater. We can calibrate it afterwards, or I'll work on that while you're doing this. So, definitely gonna expose the, the tricks the tips and tricks of the trade here, which I don't mind doing. If it helps you as a company or it helps you as a homeowner, it's a beautiful thing for me. That's the goal of a lot of, you know, a lot of this video is that I wanna help people in any way I possibly can. Um, with install, it's not just about using the tools or the techniques, it's so much more than that. You know, when it comes to theater especially, there's speaker placement, um, there's lighting involved. <laughs> There's soundproofing, you know, there's, there's acoustic treatments before and after with the initial framing period, but as, as well as acoustic treatments after the build is done. You know, all these things must be considered. Uh, you have to choose speakers, their placement, what's gonna drive them. There's a whole bunch of considerations here. But for the do-it-yourselfers, if you have an issue with a speaker or you don't know what speakers wear, a simple toner can give you all you need. So now we're toning this speaker. We know this is the surround the left speaker. In this theater, we have surround and surround back. This is a 7.1 theater. And I can't wait to get the lights on in here because it's really gonna help. As far as the lighting goes, what we have here is I pulled the switch and this isn't a real light switch. 
This is a Crestron low voltage switch that's wired to Crestnet wiring that's going back to a Crestron panel. So the lights have to be intercepted at the panel. As you can see, this is our panel and this is where our high voltage circuits come in for the lighting. So this panel is intercepting the wiring for that room. So this has to be rewired to a whole new switch and then I have to do a remote, you know, remote from this location so we have control. But we're gonna stick in an audio video for now. We'll get this receiver in, the source device is in, we'll light the theater back up, we'll test functionality, final will be calibration on everything. All right guys, so let's look at the state of this house. We've been working here, this is day two, we're wrapping up for the day. I'm honestly exhausted, so pardon me for that, but I'll try my best. Let's take a look. So. This is the room. Nice little parlor area. We have our posters. Let's go into the theater. So before we had a semi slash non-functional Crestron lighting system. The switch didn't work. We had functionality at the iPad. We could turn the lights on and off and we had some functionality of the theater and theater equipment. So the homeowner wanted something Simple and easy to use. So we went with Lutron Caseta. It's really simple, it's really easy to use, and it integrates with a lot of other technology. That includes Harmony Remote from Logitech, as well as Amazon Alexa. We did a really cool combination of the three, and let's test out some functionality and show you what I mean. So, this is the theater room. Got a nice double door. Hey Alexa, can you turn the lights on? And just like that, the lights come on. Absolutely beautiful. The functionality is awesome. It's simple. It's easy to use. I mean, personally, I, I wouldn't rather have it any other way, right? <laughs> it's, it's great. So we have voice control lights. We also have a couple other things. So we have our on-wall switch. We have control via Alexa with multiple points of microphones. We have an Alexa Eco Dot there. We have a Sonos Move there, both Alexa enabled. So we have voice control lighting system. We also have the on wall control. We'll hit the on off button. On, loving that Caseta. We also have a pedestal Pico. So this will give you remote control functionality. You can pocket this thing or you can leave it on its gorgeous little pedestal. It's nice, it's weighted, it sits right, perfect angle. I like to leave it here at the sweet spot of the theater. So that's the lighting. It's a big step forward. Uh, we do plan to do some other upgrades to the lighting system. It's a little bit dark in here. We wanna add another row of lights, more, more functional light. So future project this is gonna be add more functional lights to this room so that we can brighten it up and do more than just watch movies in here. So let's take a look at the theater, theater functionality. So we have a remote here. What we did was a Logitech Harmony we have Watch TV, Listen to Music, Roku, and Movie, and Wii. So these are your activities. As you can see, Watch TV is cable, Music is CD player, Roku is your streaming box, Movie is your DVD player, Blu-ray, and the Wii is the Wii. So let's take a look at the functionality of this. As you can see, projector up there, status light red. Let's hit Watch TV. Now, first thing that happens is, I heard the relays because I'm an electronic maniac or a wire ninja. I heard the relays click <laughs> back at the rack. I know what relays sound like. So I know the AVR turned on and I know the projector turns on because of the status light. But if you, if you can hear relays from like two rooms away, then you're, you're kind of a wire ninja. So what happens is the remote turns on the projector, the receiver, as well as the cable box. And then it switches all the inputs. And then finally, as you can see, that's, that shift in the screen there, it then becomes the remote for the cable box, as well as the volume controls for the AVR. And now we're streaming cable. Harmony I love because it's truly awesome in a couple ways. It brings a lot of value to the price point by not only providing you an exceptional remote, as well as interface, very simple, easy to operate, easy to program, it's an installer's dream, honestly, it's so nice to work with. 
but also it, it becomes you know, a, a remote control for every smart device in the home. You download the Harmony app and you have the same level of control over the entire system on each and every smartphone or iPad, tablet, good stuff. The remote itself is very nice, ergonomic, sleek, and it has a nice little charging dock. And as you can see, we're charging. So again, I was asked for simplicity and Harmony provides. Let's turn the system off. We'll hit the off button and off goes the system. So for the theater, we upgraded the lighting. We took control of it. We took control of the system with the Harmony. Um, what else did we do in the home? We added Alexas everywhere. One of the reasons we did that was to control the multi-zoned audio. We have a few Sonos moves throughout, some Play Ones, um, and we have a bunch of groups. I think we'll take a look at the rack. So as you saw the previous state of the rack, it was just awful. So we had a two day budget here to tackle the theater, simple lighting switch, as well as calibrate the audio, the video, and install some multi-zoned amps to drive the home audio. Now we did a lot more than that. We completely ripped apart this rack. We pulled out every piece of equipment from the rack. We decided what we need or what we don't need. And then we went ahead and rewired and reinstalled everything we do need. We wanted to retain and added our new equipment, our new multi-zone amps. So as you previously saw, this wiring was suspended by that pipe. There was no J hooks on the scene. We added a J hook there, one there, and then one back there to hold that additional or accessory wiring. Um, like I said, we, re we always rewire from the point of origin. The only thing left to do here at this rack is the data. The local area network definitely needs addressing. That's why you see some wires hanging still. At a later date, we will come back and we will attack the data. I want to rewire the data completely. I want to add some access points, but first I got to do some diagnostics, a little heat mapping and see where the areas need addressing because I have yet to touch the network. The network we have yet to take over. We're doing this in smaller steps. Every home and homeowner has different wants or needs and time frame. So we're working within all of those parameters and we're getting it done. But initially we had a semi-functional amp and we got all the channels back. Everything's working. We're distributing this audio into one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine zones currently. We have a few zones still left to hit and we're still going to add some source devices. Initially, we plan to only use these two source devices, retain the use of these two, but the homeowner is so happy with the functionality that he wants to add a few more sources and light up a few more channels. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Unfortunately, the initial pre-wire, not all the audio cable runs to this location. Some of it runs directly within the room, which is a horrible thing to do because now you either have to relocate the circuits completely or find a nifty way to hide equipment in the walls or something like that. So we're going to come up with solutions that work. Let's take a look at equipment, cable box, Integra. We got a DTR 7.8, Integra CDC 3.4 CD player. We have an LG Super Blue, definitely old. Unify Switch 8, 150 watt, no gateway. We're definitely going to do a gateway, take over the network, controller, software, all that good stuff. And again, two Sonos Connects that came with the home, and we split them up into two zones, distributed across these multi-zoned amps. So this is the state of the rack. You guys saw the state when we got here. You saw the state of the wiring. We did what we could to correct this in the time frame we had. Now, although it hurts me to see this, I know we're going to come back and address the rest of it when we have the time to do so. We've already planned a few more projects. We're going to hit some more lighting in the theater. Like I said, give it some functional lighting. We're going to light up some more audio video zones. And I believe we have... We're going to install some... Uh... <laughs> We actually got to do some gaming stuff. We got to do some gaming installs, get some console set up and stuff like that. But that'll be a wrap. That's everything we did here in the past two days. Just want to give you guys a good look, a good gander. 
All right, buddies, that's going to be a wrap here in Saddle River, New Jersey. I hope you guys got a good look at what we're doing here, what we did for the past two days. I gave you guys a little insight for some future projects that are going to happen here. And it's nice to bring you guys in on these installs. I'm very happy about it. Uh, it brings me a lot of joy to, to lend my knowledge, my skills to maybe other companies or even homeowners, do-it-yourselfers, whatever it may be. And thanks for watching, man. Seriously, we'll see you on the next one. Just cruising through the neighborhood. On to the next one.